Hello, Peter here. In this episode, we are going to implement one of the two modes the Blob Shadow component can operate in. The one we are doing now is where the shadow is always at a fixed Z location of an object. This would be the most common for players and monsters, etc. So let's do this because I, for one, would like to see some results again after a few episodes of only coding blueprints. So open your blob shadow component. The first thing we need to do is uh, to create a function uh, to update the shadow for, for rotation of the object. So let's create a function and let's call it update shadow for rotation update shadow for rotation no spelling mistakes no good now this it might take some I don't know really how much space it takes, but the first thing we want is the primitive component. You will find that under components if it isn't open. Primitive component, drag it out and get it. Because this is the one uh, that, that we need to get the rotation of. So get the world rotation. Then we want to have the forward vector. And then I normalize that vector. Like so. Then I'm going to make a vector Let's place it here, probably. where I set the x to 1. So what do we have here? What We have a forward vector which is in the positive uh, direction of the x axis. But this is local, this is rotated. As you may remember, our uh, opacity mask, the shadow basically, is always axis aligned in world space that would be represented by this vector which is an x-axis where the x is 1. This is already normalized and this is normalized and now we can use the dot product to find the angle between them. Well what we have here is not really the angle this is the cosine of the angle. So we need to do an arc cosine. And why is he not? Oh, it's probably called a cos. Yeah, a cosine in degrees. Now this will be the angle between the forward vector and the world space x direction. Well, that is exactly the angle that we need to set in the parameter object rotation. So we are going to do set scalar parameter value and this is not the right one so th that's because of the context not being there yet. So drag out your dynamic, our material, oh, sorry, and then say set scalar, and now you see it is a MID scalar. So this is the one that we need. And the value is that one.
Now there is one little complication with this. If this object has rotated so far that the forward vector is pointing downward, so say where the y element of that x vector becomes negative, then the angle is not correct from the arc cosinus. So we need to correct the angle in that situation. And that is fairly simple. Let's make a bit, bit of space. What we need to do is, in that case only, subtract Uh, no, it needs to be the other way around, so we break this. We need to subtract the angle from 180 degrees. And what is left, we then need to subtract sorry, we then need to add 180 to that. So that looks a bit weird, but what it basically does is it it transposes the angle to the other side, the other half of the the, the 360 degrees, so that the angle now has been corrected for the results of the arc cosine. And we need to set that one as well. So set not as well, it's the one or the other. So this value should be in there. The parameter name for both is object rotation. Let's make that a bit bigger so that we don't make spelling mistakes. Because here you don't want to have any spelling mistakes. Object rotation. So now we need to find a way that we either do this one or that one based on the situation. Well, we can find that from this normalized forward vector. If we break the vector, we get the, the components. And then we simply take the y value and say lesser than, float lesser than zero. In that case, it means it has become negative. Now, this is here a Boolean. Now we can finally make an execution line here and say branch. Now if this condition is true then we need this one. So let's put that one a bit higher up. So if it is true we use this set. If it is false we use the other one. Let's see if we have everything now. It sure looks like it. Fast recap. Get the rotation, get the forward vector, normalize it. Find the angle with the world space x axis, the world space forward vector basically. Do a dot product do an a cosinus in degrees and then we have the degrees. That, it, that will be right for half the, uh, the whole uh, 360 degrees. So we can set the scalar parameter value object rotation in our M blob shadow material, which is stored in dynamic.
only in the case when the forward directory, uh, direction has rotated so far that the y component became negative so we need to correct the angle by subtracting the angle from 180 degrees and then adding 180 degrees to the result. We branch based on this boolean. So if it is true, we take the corrected angle. If it is false, we take the angle straight off. So this is our update shadow for rotation function. Compile it, save it. Now we can go back to the event graph. Now let's move to our SDL tick here. Okay, now let's add two variables. The first one is rotate with object. And it is a boolean and we can leave it as is because what we want is to make uh, the rotation of the shadow uh, optional. I mean if you have a circular shadow you don't need to do all that. That just saves a bit of time. It needs to be public and we put it just under rotation. Or at least we try to put it on the rotation. Why is that? My god. Go under there. Well, finally. Okay, so it's there. Then we add fixed local Z. And this one is going to be a float. What is this one? Well, that is if we have an object of some sort where we add this component to, then we can specify in fixed local Z how far from the origin of that object the origin of the shadow is. And it will always be there. Uh, this is going to be public and also this one we need to move upwards which seems to be a bit of a problem. So, well, it's there. Uh, let's compile it so that we can have some default values in considering all our other values let's say 50 for this one or minus 50 even because uh, we want it under the radius but uh, it, it doesn't matter you, you want to set that for every object that you add this uh, shadow to the rotation where did that one go oh wait no this needs to be one lower this seems to be really annoying to so finally okay I don't know why I have so much problems with that all of a sudden the default for this one we can leave off Okay, so let's do this. Again, we need a primitive component. Get it? Now we need get world location. Then we take our fixed Z location. Get it? and we make a vector.
well break that link because we want it to be the Z now these two we will add so now we have the position in world space for our shadow adjusted for the fixed location now we need our shadow container mesh component get that one and we want to set the world location well the target is obviously our mesh, our queue the new location is that one so this is going to be done on every SDL tick now we're almost there because now we're going to drag out our boolean get rotate with object because if that is set we do a branch for that only in the case that that is true we need to update the shadow for rotation so update shadow for rotation and that was the function we uh, just created so this should basically create our fixed local z blob shadow Let's compile this and save this. Now we can close this. So now let's hope that we don't need to uh, do too much debugging. I mean, if you do a lot of coding uh, at once, which we've done with a lot of different objects and so on, you can always expect some problems. But first of all, let's remove our cube here with the shadow let's simply delete it we just want to have this sphere and I also want this sphere to simulate physics like that Let's save that level and just see if that works. Well, of course, you have your own map. I just need to see. Well, it is on the ground and it is moving. Great. Oh, I already had a sphere there, of course, I could use. But now we take that one. So, yeah. So this sphere, it is slightly above the ground here. But uh, it is now simulating physics. We want to add our component to that one to test. Let's go have the world outliner here. Well, we do that. Hey, why is there a star still? Didn't I save that? Oh, by the way, I also see that rotate with object here is not public yet. We need it needs to be public. Compile save. All right, now the star is gone. Oh, that was strange. Anyway, if you click on your object, I have this sphere, whatever you have, I don't know, of course, but, and go down, you see that it has a static mesh component. It's a bit cramped there. If you drag the SDL blob shadow component in there and drop it on the static mesh component, it will become a client 
the child of that one. If all is well, we now have the parameters that we created. The shadow color, the radius x, radius y, radius z, cut off. These are all fine because this the, the sphere that I have is actually about has a radius of about 50. Hardness 1, max opacity 1, rotation. We don't care right now. It has the rotate with object check. If we wouldn't have uh, changed that to public, it wouldn't have been here. And the fixed local Z is minus 50, so just on under the sphere, if all is well. Okay. Now, let's see what happens if we simply play this. Fingers crossed. Well, our warning works. You must add a SDL level data actor to your level for SDL blob shadows to work. And there were errors. Well, let's see what those errors are. Oh yeah, so here you see it called unregister SDL blob shadow even though the, the register never worked. Um, let's, let's fix that later. Let's fix that later because that is just because we never did a register because we forgot to, to even have the SDL level data. Ah oh, no, we could do this immediately really. Um, yeah, just move this to the side a bit. Break this and say is valid. That one. If it is valid, we are going to do that. Compile and save. How's that error window? Let's see if that same error still occurs. Now there weren't any errors. So good, but let's let's actually fix the, the real problem. We need the S, SDL level data actor in our level. It doesn't matter where it is because it is going to be hidden to the game anyway. So it's there. And let's see what happens now. First save the level and do play. Okay, this is just lighting needs to be built, no problem. And why is this one not... Alright. What is happening? We have another error. Okay, sorry. Alright. How come... Apparently, this one is movable, this one is movable, and the sphere is movable. So, everything is movable. What did it say? Oh, our SDL shadow container is not movable. Sorry, I wasn't reading right. The shadow container is static. So let's make that movable. Save. Now first compile. Save. Well. Okay, sorry for the jump cut, but uh, when I started it, I saw something really weird. I will press play again and you will see it as well. You will see that this ball shoots up in the sky. Let's see if that works again. 
yeah you saw it there right if we go to that sphere number three and look you see this z it is shooting up like like a mad thing okay so let's stop that how could that be that usually is a collision situation so I think we might have some problem in our SDL shadow container it is pushing this thing up and that should not be so oh yeah can character step on on no collision preset block all should be no collision compile save see if this now works better well the ball is there and look at it it has a shadow success let's stop this one last test is to go to my um, my player ah, it's called still Agatha player that doesn't matter uh, let's go and look in the viewport this is it's just a capsule uh, let's we have the mesh yeah well let's add a component and let's add the SDL blob shadow component to this this uh, capsule has that some radius the capsule is 88 in the length so if I set the radius what was it in the it was 34 and 88 blob shadow component 34 34 uh, well let, let's have some depth to it so that is going to be 50 uh, the cutoff being 56 is cool as well hardness well let's make that one 0.6 max opacity 85 rotation not interested rotate with object not interested this is going to be minus 88 then all right compile save let's close this probably should save the level so let's see what happens when I press play. Wow, I got a nice blob shadow. And it disappears when I jump. It is nice opaque with a nice fuzzy border. That is what we want. Now we only need to test one last thing. And that is in our blob shadow let's make the radius y 20 and let's say rotate with object compile save it and let's see what happens now Oh, well, I took it the wrong way, but hey, look at it. It is rotating. Ah, well, this looks stupid. Um, what we need, of course, is in the blob shadow to make this one 20, and this one can stay at 34. Compile, save. Play.
Ah, now it looks more like a human shadow. But more importantly, when I turn around, it turns with me. All the way. And that is the rotate with object. That is our function update shadow for rotation. Well, I call that success. We now have the first mode of this uh, blob shadow component working. In the next and last episode in the blob shadow series, uh, we are going to make the, the situation where we have flying objects or hovering objects. So then we don't have a fixed local Z. Okay. Thank you very much. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Hello, Peter here again. Just wanted to say thanks for watching this video. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Below there are links to other episodes in the series and don't forget to subscribe so you are the first to know when the next episode is up. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!